Welcome to video 3 on Train Controller 10 Gold. In the first two videos we saw how we can operate a train and how we can operate the turnouts on our switchboard. And now we want to go one step further. We also want to see our trains on the switchboard and yeah, maybe drive automatically. And to do that what we need is to add blocks like is shown over here and every block needs at least one sensor a detector that tells train controller that a train has entered this block this is actually similar to a real railway where trains drive from block to block and a track sensor detects that a train has entered a block and then it gets a red signal at the entry of that block and this train over here can move on it has a green signal because this block is still empty but as soon as it arrives over here and this train has not yet moved out yeah then it will have to stop at the red signal train controller can do this fully automatic so what we need is a sensor a detector a train detector many people use current detection uh, which means you have to uh, isolate a, a piece of track and then if a locomotive is on that track the motor will draw a current and uh, some electronics can sense that the current is flowing and then you have the signal the train has arrived in this section uh, personally I find find this a bit uh, uh, too complicated and I use a device called a read switch which is actually a real switch and these two uh, metal pieces are very close together and they react to a magnetic field if you place these on your track on strategic locations it might look like this these are two reed switches which I painted black because that looks nicer uh, of course you can also uh, create a little gap here in these sleepers to lower them a bit and if you ballast this track you won't even see them and then under the train you will need to place a little magnet and when the train drives over the reed switch it will make contact and then we know the train has arrived another possibility could be to use optical sensors uh, that can be done in two ways with a reflection from under and then if you put a piece of white paper or aluminium uh, then it will reflect or you can uh, use a shine through method whatever you use we need these sensor signals and they always go to a device uh, that transmits it to the command station via s88 or via loconet or via maybe a proprietary uh, data transfer protocol no matter how every sensor needs its own address and then we can read it out let's have a look in train controller how we can add blocks to the layout that we created in the previous video uh, first go to edit mode and then go to the accessory top and here at the right we find a block let's click it and now my cursor changed to a wrench and well let's just click over here and there we have a block uh, we need to enter some parameters inside this block so let's double click it and that opens oh why not double click yeah that opens the block pop-up window and let's first go to the general tab where I like to give this block a name in this case uh, let's call it West 1 we can give it a maximum speed well this is a dead end block so let's do a maximum speed of 40 uh, that means train controller will slow down a, a train that drives faster to 40 before it enters this block 
Uh, there is a whole lot more that we can do, but that is for a later video. Let's add the sensor now. In the block editor tab, we can go over here and this will add a new contact indicator. Yeah, the sensor is called a contact indicator. Let's do it and we see that it now turns pink. Um, and double click that pink sensor. And there we can make the connection of this sensor. Every sensor has its own address, so we have to connect it to the command station or a specific uh, sensor module. In my case I use the EGOS and I can select S88 protocol with 16 inputs. Yes, that's what I use. Uh, and now it has a, an address of two parts. Yeah, that is the module over here and the pin on that module. I have 16 pins per module uh, on module number one. Well, in this case, one, one is okay. And the next we will make one, two, one, three, and so forth. Okay, so this looks good. For the rest, we do not need to change anything. So let's click okay. I now have my sensor. Uh, but I also want to create a stop location. With automatic driving, we not only need to be able to detect in which block the trains are, we also want to tell train controller where to stop them. In this case, when a train drives in from the east, uh, it goes to this block and the sensor will be here right behind this turnout. And then I want uh, the train to drive on a while and then slow down and then stop just before the buffer. How can we do that? Well, we can add break and stop markers. Uh, so let's click this sensor and now we see these arrows over here. I'm driving to the left and this is a stop marker and that is now placed over here. And I can drag it uh, to the end. That is only a visual because we can still see the numbers are zero. And now I can enter the number of centimeters or inches uh, where I want this train to stop. Ah, I work in centimeters and I see over here that these, uh, the whole system is now on inches. Let me first change that. Just a moment, we have to click OK to get out of here because that change is hidden in the view menu. And over here we see metric units. I want to use metric units just because I'm used to that. Uh, OK, let's go back to the uh, accessories and let me double click this thing again. And here we are back uh, and now I have centimeters here. My uh, this is a very short track. It is only 30 centimeters. So let me enter 30 over here, which means the train will stop after 30 centimeters. How does train controller know how fast my train is driving? Uh, yeah, that is a whole different subject. We have to calibrate our trains. That is a later video. Let's click uh, OK. No, not OK. I want to uh, also add a brake marker. That is this yellow arrow uh, brake marker. Yeah. And uh, well, we have two numbers that we can use over here. The first one is how far do you want to drive the train uh, with its current speed? And then the second number is the ramp, the braking distance, so to speak. And well, uh, I put in 10 and 20 and together that is 30. So that will work out nice. If you like, you can also uh, make this say 19 and then it is going to crawl uh, with the speed step of one uh, that last centimeter. That's up to you how you want to do that. And that is all in the details. Let's click OK and we have now done our first block. Uh, seven more to go. How can we do that? One way of doing this is to click block again and then, well, quickly add more blocks. Uh, yeah, that really is quick. That takes only a couple of seconds. The drawback now is that 
every new block we need to edit and a lot of that editing is similar to what we did in block west one already so there is another possibility let me control z to get rid of what i just did uh, another possibility is to copy and paste this block let me click it we can over here copy and paste or use the standard windows keys ctrl c and then ctrl v and now i have a new block west one with an asterisk uh, but all the properties that i edited in this uh, block are the same so let me make a couple more copies and uh, then well, one over here because east well we need to change a bit more let's do that later let's now first go to west 2 and see what we have to change double click it well obviously we have to change the name and also get rid of that asterisk the speed that we edited uh, is still there the block editor uh, those distances yeah this block is a little longer of course i have to uh, measure it accurately but for this uh, demonstration let's just add 10 centimeters and 10 uh, over there and then it is 10 centimeters longer then double click the sensor because we need to change the address this one is going to get module 1 input 2 and well this may be quicker or it may be slower it just depends uh, so if you treat all these blocks now like we just did then uh, yeah you may be quicker than when you just place a lot of empty blocks and have to edit that let's go to west one at the east side uh, we need to change a little bit more the name is going to be changed to east one and then in the block editor yeah these arrows are pointing the wrong way so let me delete them you can click uh, that cross or the delete button on your keyboard and do it again but now in the other direction uh, uh, 30 centimeters and click again and then a break marker move it a little bit just for the visuals and that is 10 centimeters and 20 for the braking distance that's it uh, oh yeah the sensor double click and then the sensor this is number five and now i have my east one and i can copy ctrl c and paste it a couple of times ctrl v ctrl v ctrl v and many of the properties are already okay i just have to edit a couple it doesn't matter uh, which of the two methods you choose they both work uh, just choose the one that works the easiest or the fastest um, well i think we are ready uh, I, I fast forward now to a, a complete file all right here we are west one to four east one to four and each block has its own specific correct parameters inside um, let's drive a train uh, for that we have to get out of edit mode uh, so I click this little uh, edit mode icon and uh, yeah we have to we can go to window mode because we need a train window uh, or at least I want to have one to see what's happening we already created this freight train uh, driving window this throttle um, let me place a train over here uh, that is done simply by drag and drop so i can click that train and drag it over there oh wait uh, have a look at that little arrow and now the arrow is pointing to the left and now the arrow is pointing to the right uh, you can place the train of course in both directions and where you let go of the mouse that's the direction it is going to place it in um, okay I want to drive this train but my layout is not yet finished as we can see here in this picture it's under construction luckily the train controller has a command station simulator on board and we can find that over here I am going to open the simulator and press play which means it's now running I should be able now to drive this train in this simulator mode 
Well, let's do that. Uh, I give it a speed, uh, uh, too high speed, uh, much too high, uh, because I wanted to drive 40 in these blocks. But yeah, I'm manually controlling this train. I can do whatever I like manually. Well, uh, after a while, oh yeah, there were some uh, uh, turnouts switched and the train ended up over there. Of course, it's now already bumping into the buffer because I forgot to uh, go to zero. Manually driving, well, you have to look out what you are doing, of course. Uh, let's do some automatic driving. For that, we have to click the operation top and over here we find auto train by drag and drop which means we can send a train from A to B. Well, let's try that out. I want to go from East 4 to West 2. Uh, let me click this and then over here we see if, if I hold on this block with the mouse cursor, we see a little uh, a collection of icons. I am going to drive to the left, so I click and hold the icon to the left. Now I'm going to hover over West 2. Again, a couple of icons pop up. I want to drive to the left, so I let go on that left icon. And look what happens. Automatically it creates a route. The junctions are switched. The signal is green. The speed is now 40. Yeah, that was the maximum allowed speed in these blocks. Uh, so it is now driving 40, that takes a little bit longer before it enters that block, but it should be there yeah, almost right now. Let's just wait. Yeah, yeah, I hope it is. Yeah, there it is. The sensor has picked it up. It is slowing down oh, and it has stopped at the stop marker. So. All is well, our layout, or at least the demo, the simulation, seems to be working. Our sensors are doing a good job. You see the block turn pink, which means that the block is now occupied. Uh, uh, the, the sensor has detected a train. A job well done. Let's have a look in the next video yeah, at a couple more ways to do automatic driving. Maybe see you back there and in the meantime have fun.